Aston Martin's obsession is design. That drives us into really interesting spaces and creates amazing products, amazing vehicles, and amazing experiences. Rather than me try and describe those, let's show you. Reaching for the horizon. For a feeling, a sensation, car and driver. In tune, at one. A place to revel, a feeling to harness. For intimate, uncorrupted connection. For the thrill, know every inch. Trust every instant. A relationship of explosive potential. Complete control. Put down. Exhale. Let's go. Valhalla. For the mastery of driving. A snip at £800,000, so have a word after if you're interested. But working at Aston is really inspirational. You walk the corridors and you meet interesting people. You have interesting conversations. And you're really focusing on what is this organisation about? What was 110 years of engineering excellence delivering? And when I joined three years ago, I couldn't believe my luck. You know, the vehicles are beautiful. I'm no petrol head, but I just like, I think they look great. But when you're speaking to people within Aston, there's a real obsession with how do we make things better? How do we inculcate excellence in everything we do? And for a time, it's quite obvious that cyber weren't doing that. So as we started to explore the philosophy at Aston, it occurred to me that I'm part of the team. I contribute in some small way to the design of these amazing vehicles that are going across the world. They're in bomb films. They're coming... 15th in the F1, maybe we'll be a bit better next year. But, but you're part of a chain that's aligned to a business that's really important to people. And part of that approach is about what are the ideas that can really push Aston to the edge. And if you look at the design approach that we have within the vehicles, they will take up interesting new ideas around how do we improve. And you can see on the screen here the golden ratio. Are people familiar with the golden ratio? You'll have seen it everywhere. It's that kind of Fibonacci sequence whereby you get balance and harmony between elements in design. Now, what does this have to do with cyber? Nothing until we started thinking about how do we contribute towards Aston Martin. Aston Martin have had some failures. There is a vehicle designed with the Fibonacci sequence, a golden ratio, all in place. You won't have seen any of those vehicles on road they never made it out of the studio. But there was insight number one. Be prepared to try new things and fail. It's not a problem. The fact is that we are synthesising new ways of working. We're thinking about kind of different interests, different influences, different sources of inspiration. And they're able to generate new insights. That vehicle was a result of the failure of the Fibonacci design. DB12, fantastic, 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds. I won't keep advertising the prices. They are a bit expensive, but they are beautiful. There's a near infinite amount of crime, according to the Daily Mail, but there's a, a, lot, of, there's a lot of crime and only a finite amount of resources. So how do the police address what are priorities that are going to have high impact? Well, they use risk intelligence really well. Don't do everything so well, but they use risk intelligence really well to produce problem profiles, make interventions, and have a high impact on society. And at Aston, we're corporate. We need to look at the kind of existence of other behemoths in the market. Anyone still got a Nokia phone? I don't know if they still make them. That was the CTO's perspective on their failure, missing big trends. We all saw it. Uh, the CTO at Nokia didn't see the fact that they were going out of business. Are people aware of how YouTube started? As a YouTube addict at this point, I can't stop watching the Topman highlights at the moment. It's so crazy. Um, YouTube started as a dating site, but they were able to pivot. But these are large trends. They're technological. They're, they're, they're in our environment, and they're giving us cues as to what matters, not just to the public, 
but to our employees into society on a wider perspective. Now, I'm on the conference circuit fairly regularly, and the whole talk is about generative AI. And I'm not sure I've got a clear perspective at the moment, which is we're trying to think it through what are the impact, what are the resources, and what are the requirements. So we're trying to think through how does generative AI impact Aston Martin. But we do have a method. I don't claim to have any answers today, but I can tell you we have a method. We take the design philosophy, we take our awareness of the environment, and we take our awareness of change is constant. We're, we're Hegelians. We think about dialectics and synthesis and antithesis. And we do it in a very clear fashion, based on my experience uh, in policing, which is cyber threat intelligence management. I'm happy to kind of uh, share with this outside of this. Really, the impulse here is to create an intelligence management process that is valuable, focus, optimizes resources, and focuses on output. Now, criticism of law enforcement is sometimes intelligence is seen as an end in itself. We've, and and cybersecurity pr uh, practitioners are just as guilty, which is, we found out about SolarWinds, right, job done. Well, no, that should spark actionable intelligence that leads to interventions that leads to improvement. Now, this might sound like common sense, but common sense isn't so common in some organisations. CTIM gives us a managed, resource-focused way of prioritising cyber risks, bringing in those influences and different ways of working, producing products such as our intelligence risk assessment or our annual strategic risk assessment that allow us to harmonise with the design strategy. So on an annual basis, we will produce a complete analysis of where we are in the cyber market, comparative review with other automotive, uh, a review of emergent risk, and we present this to the board in a narrative which is short, sharp and punchy, which is, this year, these are the risks that Aston Martin faces, and the action we are going to take is going to be based around resourcing, profiling and prioritising. And this is CTIM in action. And what CTIM has driven is driven us into new areas of design and thinking. And one of the key areas is making sure that we are adopting all the automated technology that we can. We're partnering with Darktrace, partnering with Sentinel-1. Again, those aren't ends in itself. Just because I've got Darktrace doesn't mean I'm secure. Just because I've got Sentinel-1 doesn't mean our XDR has done really well. So what we're trying to do is use CTIM to say, the next phase of automated security is complete automation of SOC1 analysts. What we're trying to do is inform those conversations with our partners is to say that your technology does this, but our risk intelligence is telling us in a year's time, in two years' time, XDR needs to be operating in this fashion. So we're leading the automation conversation rather than being responding. Now, you are all subject to that phone call, which is, you know, we want to sell you this automation that's going to solve your problems. I've been working long enough to know that that conversation is, one, a waste of my time, two, very rarely true, and three, I'm not leading that. By having CTIM, what we're able to do is go into those conversations with a clear perspective and a clear focus on what problems we're trying to solve. And that leads into this idea of, you know, I'm not technical. My staff will tell you as they laugh at my absolute absence of technical skills. But I do see optimization as key to what we're doing within cybersecurity design. And I do see that just as, it's a funny one at Aston Martin, there's a bit of dissonance. It's handmade cars in an automated age. There's a bit of dissonance there, not for me. Cybersecurity is about automation and mo moving towards an autonomic future. I'll talk about that in a moment. But we want to use automation as a way of improving cognitive intelligence. One making sure my analysts are more skilled, more focused, using their time on not just shift, sifting through dark trace, which is what they still do, which is infuriating, not just reflecting on the 55, 60, 70 intelligence feeds we get on a daily basis. That's a waste of time. We want to position our analysts within the CTIM framework to take decisions, to always be focused on intelligence and action, intelligence and action. We want them to be able to have clarity of purpose rather than being the Securitron 3000 going through 5,000 logs. You know, it's 2024 nearly. What we want is cognitive intelligence, analysts that are active and influential, not glorified administrators. One of the issues we've got for our organisation is when, not if. That's the same. It's a cliche even within the last couple of years. 
And one of the concerns we've got is around scanning. But we've happened upon this idea of adaptive resilience, which is all of our testing, all of our simulations, they're based on when we're breached, how do we respond? How do we use intelligence to understand blast radius? How do we make sure we have cyber grab bags in play? And how do we have the key message in? You know, Aston Martin's got that type of audience, that kind of customer base that we're able to communicate clearly and efficiently, informed by intelligence, focus on outcomes, making sure that we can control our response to any incidents. And we have had them. You know, I'm not going to say that we left customer data on the cloud. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that information, particularly in automotive, it's quite funny. I don't know if there's anyone else from automotive. It's an industry that cannibalizes staff from Ferrari to Porsche to Mercedes to Aston Martin. Great when we're the beneficiaries, and I've just come from Ferrari. Look at these designs. I'm not saying that happens, but let's imagine it does happen. Not so great when I'm leaving Aston Martin to go to JLR and I'm going to be taking all this IP with us. That is a problem. It's data loss, it's exfiltration, it's infringement of IP and trade secrets. So we want to reinforce notions that we can scan and sense for these risks across the organisation. And I'm a big believer in prevention. We want that cyber hygiene. I'm not going to talk about that. We all know about that. We want that cyber hygiene in place. But we also want thinking machines within the organisation. The fact is, the future is autonomic. We are driving towards systems and management and processes that are cybernetic. They are complementary to our perspectives on technology. They might be a few years away, but we are planning for it right now. We've got good resources. We've got good partnerships. And we're looking for an engagement that is um, driving towards, let me show you this, something like this, which is uh, Google's autonomic security operations model. And here, we are really foundering this idea of cyber threat management in real time. You can see that we've got detection and response going on on an ongoing basis. We have that visibility of data that informs risk decisions. The security analytics go into planning for automated security architecture, and mostly, the most important bit from this, really, is feedback. Now, I'm a big believer in floor walking. It's, it's OK when you walk at work at kind of Aston Martin. The floor walk is go and see the cars being built. It's great. And you're all very welcome to come and join. <laughs> when I worked in the basement of Doncaster NHS, and it wasn't that, that long ago, floor walking was not, not that much fun, to be honest. It was either surgery or... You know, the point being... The feedback that we get here is another form of intelligence. The conversations that we have, even this week, we have a I am safety week within production. I am not going to pretend that if you go to Aston Martin at Gaydon, it's not far away, that if you speak to people, they're going to be oh, our number one obsession in cybersecurity. No, it's not that. So we've used the feedback from production to say, OK, if you're not interested in security, how interested are you in safety? And from the feedback we've got, we start to swap out security for safety. So this week is Cyber Safety Week, and we're focusing on why should you care about cyber safety, from protecting your own device to sharing information to using a VPN on your own device. And we've tapped into this idea of digital literacy. You know, I don't really care about Aston security, but I've got kids that are going to school that have got iPhones. I've got a device that I don't know how to secure. And we're tapping into the psychology around creating positive choices from feedback, which is, whilst it's been a bit debunked, but being pro-social, being nudging people and taking the right choices around security. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is all arising from CTIM, that flow of intelligence across the organisation that allows us to become pro-social. Again, this is a little bit of jargon, but I like the kind of philosophy of pro-social, which is create good choices for the organisation. We have just bought another training product. I've been buying training products for 20 years out of... Let's say I've bought 10, I regret buying nine and a half. They're all terrible. But what we want to do is create the choice for staff to be able to take training choices that suit them. I like sitting in a lecture theatre. Some people have got different learning styles. But the feedback from the staff is not to just land the training product, but to give them choices around how could I consume, how could I learn. And that means different media, different formats, and actually answering questions. So at lunchtime today, you'll see me downstairs on headphones. We have the digital garage. Now, you can groan a little bit at that. We nicked it from Google. The digital garage and your digital MOT. Now, these are tapping in to the psychology of the organisation, creating a pro-social choice, which is let's collaborate, let's communicate, let's converse, 
and let's make sure that if you've got to do this, that there is some benefit to you. So at the digital garage, you learn how to put a VPN on your phone. You use Vodafone's digital parenting magazine. If you've not seen it, fantastic. And you can tap into things that make your job, your life much easier. And then there's a reciprocal benefit for Aston Martin. You, know, you start to think about being pro-social in the workplace. Now, this isn't to claim that we have solved the intelligent requirement. We are now working on building our risk intelligence quotient so we understand how do we move from responsive, reactive intelligence management to predictive intelligence, assistive intelligence, adaptive intelligence. These aren't buzzwords. This is going from being reactive to being proactive. Forecast in cybercrime. You know, if cybercrime is becoming this $7 trillion economy, we want to forecast what exactly the impact will be going forward. And we want to understand how risk can drive better consumer relationships, that we can integrate kind of different media, and that we can start to focus on the future of the car, which is connected, maybe not autonomous, you don't buy an Aston Martin to become autonomous, but, but the idea of a connected car, which is 85 ECUs, lots of personalization, lots of personal data, it essentially becomes the boundary of the organization. It needs protecting, and we need to forecast that protection. And by having a design philosophy that harmonizing with how the Valkyrie or the Valhalla is produced, we're able to link in with aligned business focus. You know, we're able to align and focus on what is the business focusing on? What are they obsessed with at the moment? How does cybersecurity underpin and amplify the value of that obsession? We always try different ways of working. I've come back from a background in privacy and knowledge management, and some of it is a waste of time, and some of it really works. So when it amplifies that value, grab hold of it. CTIM has amplified the value within the organization. But it hasn't stopped us innovating, and it hasn't stopped our approach to innovation. It's an absolute pleasure to work at Aston Martin, but there's no good if we're not contributing to the future of the organisation. So CTIM has enabled us to really correspond with the future of Aston Martin and make a huge advance in cyber planning. Thank you very much.